we've got to have money. Oh man, Fox here, and let me tell you, I was kind of dreading making this video because I could just tell you to farm influence that you should just sell bulk plague cures for 500 influence, and I could just end it right there, you know? Uh, you don't have to be good to get good, etc. But no, that would be an incomplete explanation, and the full explanation I fear will take some time. You see, although selling the bulk plague cures is a fantastic idea, you want to leverage as many resources as possible so you can continue to make influence even when you cannot use bulk plague cures. And to that end, we will have to go over how to create a system of influence generation in State of Decay 2. This is going to be broken down into basically two parts. The things that you can do on a moment-to-moment, -moment, play play-by-play basis to increase your influence gains, and then the more long-term, the things that take a little while to get set up in order to get this influence-generating machine going. All right, so let's start with the things that you can do right now, things that don't really require any setup. I suspect that you will know all of these methods or most of these methods, but I want to emphasize the importance of them because you may be taking them for granted. First off, go to your command center and go to the satellite broadcast ability. Just turn that on and you will get plus 20% influence from your zombie kills. It doesn't take any effort. It's just free extra influence. Just have that running all the time. Next, I want you to kill all of the freak zombies that you encounter, unless you're just in a huge hurry, because killing them adds up over time. Screamers are worth 5 influence, bloaters are worth 10 influence, ferals are worth 25 influence, and juggernauts are worth 50 influence. You may not think that that makes a very big deal, but let me tell you, if you go to your stats and you look at the amount of ferals you've killed, for example, if we look at what I have here, 683 ferals slain, well then, 683 dead ferals times 25 influence per dead feral gets us 17,075 total influence. So it might not seem like it makes a big difference, but over the course of the game, oh yeah, big difference. And make sure you're killing those plague zombies because they do drop those plague samples that we need in order to make bulk plague cure. On one hand, Undead Labs is like, ooh, we're making the hordes bigger. But on the other hand, that actually works in our favor because that means more plague samples and more influence. And don't forget that crossbows are capable of increasing the drop rate of the plague samples. Now, if you need influence, like, right now, then you can kill Plague Hearts. Each Plague Heart is worth 100 influence, and it can be destroyed pretty easily with three pipe bombs. Just make sure that your pipe bombs are thrown on target. Otherwise, sometimes they don't count for some reason. So bring a few extra pipe bombs. Actually, bring a whole bunch of pipe bombs in case a few of the blasts don't count. The Plague Arts are also a pretty good way to farm a large quantity of Plague Samples, and indeed, one of your strategies could be to hop from map to map and just clear the area of Plague Hearts. Though when you do go into a new map, the efficiency is reduced because you will have to locate all of the Plague Hearts manually, but if you're in a map that you're not particularly fond of, yeah, wipe out all the Plague Hearts, get 100 influence per heart and a whole bunch of Plague Samples and just go somewhere else. This might also work with a friend. If you jump in with somebody else and kill their Plague Hearts, you might be able to get the 100 influence from theirs as well. Anyways, let's move on to the next basic element, which would be doing missions. Missions give you between 30 and 60 influence each, but they also can give you items, items that could be worth selling or bulk resource items for your base, which you want to keep because we got to use for them later. But most importantly, sometimes you will make allies, and the more allies you have, the more people you have to sell to, because each ally will have 500 influence per day. Lastly, let's talk about salvaging. When you're out looting, there's probably a lot of items you overlook that could be sold for decent influence. First off, make sure you take any facility mod that you find. The vast majority of them are going to sell for about 85 influence each. Next, make sure you get all the resources. Even if you have an overflow, a glut of resources, just put them in the trunks of vehicles and park them near your base because we're going to have a use for them. Lastly, make sure you pick up any of the luxury items. You'll know it's a luxury item because in the description at the bottom, it'll say it has some kind of trade value. These packs of smokes, for example, are going to sell for over 100 influence. 
And those are the basics, the elementary things that most people probably know, but maybe you take it for granted. Or perhaps you forgot one. But now we're going to move on to the more advanced stuff. We're going to set up a system of influence generation because really a single method doesn't really cut it. Selling bulk plague cures is good, but what we really need is a whole bunch of stuff to sell and they require different techniques. This all revolves around getting certain resources, transforming them into another resource that's more valuable to sell and then selling that. This is the most sustainable long-term way to generate influence, but most importantly, it allows us to exceed the influence cap, which is 9,999. Let's just call it 10K for short. What I mean by that is if you get 10K influence, any further influence gains, they disappear. They don't count. They are void. But items that can be sold, they are not influence until you sell them. So you could hit 10K influence, but you could continue to stock up good items to sell. And then when you drop like 6,000 influence on a trader, instead of having to build yourself back up from 4,000 influence, you can just sell the crap that you've been gaining, gathering and obtaining, and just get all of your your influence back immediately. And this is how you do it. Before we begin, there's two optional things I want you to be aware of. You may want your leader to be a trader, and you may want to move into Squellone's Brewery, a six-man base in Mayor Valley. Being a trader means you can create the Trade Depot large facility, and that allows you to call in wandering traders directly to your base on demand, which obviously facilitates trading. And Squellone's Brewery is the only location that allows you to create craft beer, which I believe is the most valuable item that you can create from food resources. Now, this is not necessary, but it is helpful. First off, make sure you are getting allies. We need allies. 500 influence per allied enclave, so the more the better. Selling to people who dislike you, not necessarily neutral. Neutral people may give you full price, but people who don't like you, they will sell less than the highest amount. While you're out and about, though, it's time to start gathering the resources. First off, we need plague samples. If you see one, if you run a plague zombie over with a car and it drops it, grab the sample unless you're in a great hurry. Crossbows help here. Next, we need medicine. And when I say next, I don't mean any of these in a particular order. Just gather all of these as you encounter them. The reason we need medicine is because to make a bulk plague cure, which is worth 500 influence, we need 20 plague samples and also 8 medicine. And you can wind up going through your medicine supply pretty quickly. Then there is ammunition. If you ever get overstocked on ammo, what you want to do is use a heavy ammo press to create 40 millimeter grenades. You'll get between three and four grenades, depending on if you have the munitions bonus or not, and every grenade sells for 34 influence. So you're basically getting between 102 and 136 influence every time you use the press. For food, we want to create crafted beer. You can only make this at Squellone's Brewery. It's going to cost you three food, and there's two still, so you can have two going at once. And you're going to get four packs of crafted beer. Each of them are worth 34 influence, so every time you complete one of these, you're going to get 136 influence. And you don't have to wait on it. You can do other activities while the beer is being made. If you're not in Squellone's Brewery and you're also a trader, you can make a regular still. You won't be able to make beer, but you can make homemade whiskey. This costs 5 ethanol, which is also equal to 3 food, because you can turn 3 food into 5 ethanol. You'll get 3 units of homemade whiskey and each sell for 26 influence. And that's going to come out to 76 influence altogether. Definitely not as good as the crafted beer. It's worth less, and you might have to go through multiple stages if you don't have the ethanol on hand. But it's still not bad as an alternative. But it speaks wonders for moving into Squellones. For excess materials, you first want to convert them into parts, and you either want to use a CNC mill or a forge. They both do the same thing. They convert materials to parts at an enhanced rate. The forge does it faster than the CNC mill, which is a mod, but the CNC mill doesn't have a trade skill requirement. You just got to plug it into the workshop, whereas the forge does require you to have knowledge of craftsmanship. Once you have the parts, though, you should make toolkits. They're going to sell for 48 each, and depending on if you have any bonuses, you can drop the cost from about 50 parts to, I think, 25 parts, which is pretty nuts. I don't have a mechanic right now, so I can't take advantage of that, so I'll give you an alternative. 
There could definitely be room for improvement in this area. Perhaps the better toolkits sell even better. You might want to do some of your own exploring there, but the regular toolkits are still a good choice. The alternative, if you don't have a mechanic, is actually to use materials and fuel, because honestly, fuel isn't super valuable, but you can create fuel bombs which require parts, fuel, and chemicals. But if you have chemistry and a filling machine mod, you can really increase the amount of fuel bombs you get, going from 6 to up to 12. Each fuel bomb will sell for 17 influence, so if you can get 12 per craft, that'll add up pretty nicely. Remember that there's a lot of room for your own creativity here. I've given you what I think are either the best or very good, but there's definitely gaps in what I'm able to produce, and you might be able to find a better idea. What I'm giving you is the primary concept. Anyways, once you've amassed your big stock of items, you're gonna want to sell it. And here's my final tip for selling a large quantity of stuff, especially if it doesn't stack in large quantities. First, get your character and get a good vehicle that has eight slots. I love the Brogan Trekker eight slots, plus it's decently maneuverable. Fill up the trunk of the vehicle, fill up your character, and then go and list another member of your community. Once you do that, you can actively swap between the two characters without causing them to stop following each other. So now you swap to that character and then load them up, and then you both get into the vehicle and start selling your crap to whomever you want. That will maximize your inventory slots. So in conclusion, there's a lot of different ways to make influence if you've got your eyes open and you know what to look for. Kill those freak zombies because they do add up over time. When you're looting, keep your eyes open for good influence opportunities. Do the missions because you need the influence, you need the loot, and you need the allies. But ultimately, if you really want to break that 10k influence cap, you need to start producing stuff to sell. Use everything at your disposal. All of those overstocked resources can be turned into something more valuable. And hey, that is it. Looks like it didn't take quite as long as I thought it would. Like this video if it was helpful or interesting. Of course, subscribe for future Stavy K2 content. And remember that you don't have to be good to get money.